I thought we'd play a little game here called fill in the fill in the blank inspired by the NFL draft because there's a ton of storylines here. And I think a lot of these can have an interesting uh, segment revolved around what goes in the blank for each of these particular categories. So I'm going to start off with number one for you, Bruce. You ready? I'm ready. The Jets drafting Zach Wilson is a blank decision. Reasonable. It's a reasonable decision. I completely understand why people have Zach Wilson as QB2. And I completely understand why Robert Sala, coming from the 49ers, would want a quarterback that Kyle Shanahan has been trying to get. And that's someone who can make plays off schedule. Someone who would perform well inside the play-action zone-based system that is likely coming from San Francisco back, but in addition, be able to do the things that Kyle Shanahan's trying to get a quarterback to do. So it seems reasonable. If that's what I'm trying to achieve, I can look at Zach Wilson and go, yeah, okay, I get it. I see where you're going with this. I think reasonable is a perfect word there. And I, 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 and honestly, now it's a necessity because Darnold's gone. You have to go quarterback and it just seems like at this point they are so invested at least media speaking into Zach Wilson if they don't go that route the Jets fan base is going to implode there's a, there's a certain PR aspect to that when your entire fan base is convinced you are taking a particular guy to the point where it's not even arguable at, at, at one point or another you have to go that route the thing about Zach Wilson to me that has been so confusing throughout this whole thing is just that it was never a topic. Zach Wilson was never discussed at the top tier uh, realm of the draft in, until the the middle of the offseason. That, that's what's so intriguing to me about this. And he's also got similar qualities to Sam Darnold, where I, I you, you look at him and he comes out with this label that he could potentially be the best quarterback in the draft, right? And, in, and Sam Darnold, Josh Allen's draft class, Sam Donald was considered to be the best. And when there's expectations there, especially in New York, and especially when you're going into a situation that might not necessarily be built for your success, there's a lot to prove. And that's what I worry about with, with Zach Wilson. Is it one, that much of an upgrade over Sam Donald and two, have they done enough or will they do enough to allow him to succeed? Because they clearly did not with Sam Donald. All right. Uh, oh, go ahead, Bruce. You got something to say? No, no, I'm good, man. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Number two, Bruce, the def the first defensive player off the board will be blank. Oh, wow. That's a great one. First defensive player off the board will be Patrick Sertan Jr. Mm, yep. I, I think uh, Cowboys, I think that makes sense for them. Uh, Patrick Sertan Jr. is one of those players that if you desperately need a corner and you don't really want to take swings at Hail Marys with JC Horn, yep. then you just say, you know what? We're going to take Patrick Sertan. We're going to take it to the bank. We're going to be very, very pleased. It's not just a high floor player. It's also, he's really good right now from a technical standpoint. So when you are in a situation where you really need a corner, the way that the Cowboys really need a corner, you think, do I want to get cute here? Do I want to take a high upside player who I'm going to have to coach around, or I don't need him next year. I need him now. Right. So I don't want to wait three years for him to be a good player and develop. I want to be able to plug him in right now, a la Tredavious White, and be able to have him walk off the bus as a corner. And if you take all the things that they said about Tredavious White coming out, right? Professional, works in a bunch of different techniques, always is where he's supposed to be. If you take all these things from a technique standpoint, you can apply all of them to Patrick Sertan. So for me, that makes sense because it's the safest pick and we don't have that one dominant clear-cut edge rusher who's going to go in the top five like we do a lot of drafts. I'm in agreement. Patrick Sertan, to me, is going to be the first one off the board, but that's the cowboy element of that segues into, segues into number three. At the 10th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys will draft a player on the blank side of the ball. I'm assuming you think defense. I do think defense. It was all yeah. part of my master plan. All part of my master plan, yeah, Zubon. You, you, you read like a book. Your leather I, book. I could see the reflection of the notes in your eyes. 
That's See, what it was. Got, you got more powers than money. You can do the voice. You can do the, you can be anonymous. I mean, you are, you're the dark knight. I mean, you really are, Bruce. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I have to say, uh, Bruce, if, if for some insane reason, Kyle Pitts falls down to Dallas, I don't think Jerry Jones can resist. That's he the- absolutely can't resist. Absolutely. That- 100%. So that's to me where I o- that's the only situation where I see the Cowboys going offense, but they're fools if they do anything else, because I mean, that defense is just atrocious. It, it needs work in almost every area. You got to take a guy like you just said, who can help you out now. And I think Patrick Sertan or one of the other top level defensive players does that. The nice thing for Dallas is that it's really looking like the top nine picks are all going to be offensive players. So they essentially get the pick of the litter when it comes to defense. They really do get the number one overall defensive choice should the board fall the way everybody thinks it will. So Cowboys primed to go D, but uh, we know Jerry Jones. He likes his shiny cho- uh, shiny toys, Bruce. Uh, if Kyle Pitts uh, shockingly falls to 10, that would be uh, would be crazy. Okay, this one's my favorite, Bruce. Blank is the quarterback most likely to win rookie of the year. Wow. I'll go with Trevor Lawrence. Okay. The reason I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence is because I think that when you look at Urban Meyer and his systems and how they were able to make things easy on a quarterback when he was in college, I don't anticipate him and the offensive coordinator in Jacksonville to make significantly different decisions than Urban made when he was in college in regards to offensive system. And so I do think we'll see a lot of the things that will allow Trevor Lawrence to be successful right now. I think we'll see a lot of RPO game. We'll see a a lot of horizontal passing, some jet motion, some things that don't make him be a down the field, full field read passer right away. And because of that, I think there's a real opportunity for Trevor Lawrence to win rookie of the year. I think it's going to be really close. Trevor Lawrence will be right there. To me, I think it's whoever goes to the 49ers because I think the 49ers right now, out of all the teams built or out of all the teams in position to draft a quarterback are the one built for success right now. And because of that, I think that ultimately elevates whichever quarterback they wind up choosing. So I think that quarterback is put at an advantage to succeed. Um, So I think that whoever goes to the 49ers has the best chance, but I'm dying to see Trevor Lawrence in an NFL uniform, Bruce, because he, we, we have we have been built up to believe that he is going to be the greatest of all time. So it, it's really going to be it's going to be something if he doesn't win rookie of the year. Right. The way he's been touted coming out of college. I mean, I think it would be the expectation at this point that he wins rookie of the year. Yeah, I think that there has been a significant buildup with Trevor Lawrence. I do think that the buildup will pacify a little bit because he's going to Jacksonville sure. and it's a smaller media market. But I do think that the eyes that will be brought upon Jacksonville due to the presence of Urban Meyer might offset the smaller market function. And if he plays well, then obviously that's that's going to be a big part of it. Final one, Bruce, before we get into our last little segment here. I could see Brandon Bean trading up for blank. I could see Brandon Bean trading up for the last edge rusher in the first tier. So whoever he feels like that is, whether that's Aziz Ojolari, whether that's Quiddy Pay, I don't think it would be Jalen Phillips because of what he said about medical being a problem. But if Aziz Ojolari or Quiddy Pay are there in the mid-20s, mm-hmm. that's someone I could see Brandon being trading up for because he doesn't want to be faced with the option of Eric Stokes or Jason Oway at 30th. So for me, I could see him trading up for the last edge rusher in the tier that he believes is the highest. Love it. The answer for me is no one. I just don't see the bills. I don't, I don't see Brandon Bean going that route this year in the draft. I think they're going into this with a mindset that they're going to see where the chips fall and they have their guys in mind that are going to wind up being available in that particular uh, set of picks towards the end. And I just don't know if Brandon Bean thinks that going up to get a particular guy is worth it this year after, you know, it, with the, with the cap suppression and with the, and, and with whether they think they are right now. I just wonder if at 30, 
he feels confident in being able to find a guy like you and I were talking about that they can build into somebody that maybe down the line we think would be worth way higher than what they get him at. Like I, I liked what we were talking about earlier because it made a lot of sense. It just seemed like at 30, despite Brandon Bean being super aggressive, it seems like a spot where the Bills can still get a good talent for what they need without having to move up. It just seems like with the offensive heavy draft that we're about to witness, a Bills team that needs defensive help is in a good spot being at 30. I would agree with that. And this is the line between aggressive and reckless. And when you trade up in the first round, you're giving up good players, your second round pick, your third round pick. When you trade up in the fifth round, you're giving up picks for players that might not make your team. So I do think Brandon Bean's going to trade up. I would doubt he trades up in the first round. But to be honest, last year when we went the entire draft and Brandon Bean didn't trade up, I was absolutely floored. We got to the end of the draft. And I'm like, this can't be real. Yeah. Did I just, am I in, is this inception? Am I in someone's dream at this point? Why did Brandon Bean not trade up? So right. I think maybe we might see some trade ups on day three, this particular year to get specifically targeted players because the team is deep. And because you understand that your seventh round mix picks might, 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 yeah, might not make the team, but I don't think trading up in the first round is probably as likely.